Good afternoon, everyone. This is Stephen Petty again from the Petty Podcast. This is podcast number six. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use common sense exposure controls to control really almost any uh, contaminant. But in this case, we've been talking about COVID-19. So I want to give you some solutions, not simply tell you all the things that don't work, but actually give you some solutions. Our podcast will do that for you today. Um, Recall that I've basically said masks are not effective. The problem is there's gaps around the sides. Regardless of the effectiveness of the the mask material itself, there are enough gaps that they just don't seal, and that's a problem. Um, Recall also that I talked at length in one of the first three podcasts about the hierarchy of controls. This is a concept in industrial hygiene where we look at what's, what's the most effective for controlling exposures to what's the least effective. And what we've been talking about is the most effective methods for controlling exposures that are available to us, since substitution elimination really don't apply to COVID, is the engineering controls of dilution through ventilation or destruction. Dilution and ventilation is another fancy word for saying fresh air. We want, we want as much fresh air as we can get into a building, particularly. Recall that I said exposure is really a function of two main parameters, the concentration or concentrations, lower is always better. That makes sense. That's common sense. And then time, less is better too. So the less you're exposed to the material, the better off you are. So let's focus first on lowering the concentration. So often we won't know whether uh, what the concentrations are. We don't have an instantaneous meter to know whether or not we're walking through COVID particles and what their concentration is. And that's especially true indoors because we know indoors that's where if the COVID particles are going to concentrate or be at the highest levels, that's where they'll be. So what can we do? Well, there's really two things we can do. We can either dilute the particles by ventilation or fresh air. Ventilation means fresh air in our case. Or we can destroy them. We can use technologies that actually destroy them. If we destroy them, they're lower concentration. So in terms of dilution, what can we do? Well, the key is fresh air. Recall that I talked earlier when I heard some of our politicians talking about, especially in cities where a lot of people are in multifamily or apartments, condominiums, etc., that they needed to stay indoors. They need to be locked down. That word drove me crazy because, and and not to go to parks, not to go to the beaches. Well, that's exactly 100% opposite of what you would want to do as an industrial hygienist because what you want to do is dilute those contaminants by as much as you can. And what better place to dilute contaminants than to be outside? That's the best way of, that's the maximum fresh air you can get. So the key is to spend more time or meet outdoors when you can. If you can't, and particularly if you're in a residential commercial environment, crack open windows, open the doors, especially if you have company over and you're concerned. You'll be surprised at You could dilute the concentration of those contaminants easily by a factor of 100 if you have lots of fresh air running through your house. Yes, it'll chew up a little more electricity or natural gas or propane, but for the time being, with some of the uncertainties related to COVID, why not? The other way in in industrial and um, commercial buildings is, this may be a topic you're not as familiar with, but the HVAC or heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems in large buildings have what they call fresh air dampers. And what these do is they open and close to allow less or more fresh air into the building. With our energy codes, a lot of these dampers are set to to have minimum opening because it turns out that because the fresh air uh, takes more energy to treat, either to cool it or heat it, and to remove the humidity, um, what designers have done in the last few decades is decrease the amount of fresh air into spaces, or at least work to do that. Well, in this time, one of the things we can do is override those dampers to ensure we have maximum fresh air into the building. 
And I think that should be done, even if it does override the energy codes for the time being until we get this crisis behind us. The second area where we can look at in order to uh, eliminate or reduce COVID concentrations in the air is actually to destroy them or remove them. The first technology I want to mention is needle point ionization technology. New Calgon iWave makes one of these devices. They're about four by six inches, about $400, uh, 50 to 100% more to have them installed unless you do it yourself. And they're recognized as destroying COVID particles each time they come by um, the device as it circulates through the HVAC system. Um, And near as I can tell, there are little or no side effects. Another technology that's been mentioned uh, as destroying COVID particles is ionized hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a disinfectant in a liquid form, but in this case, we ionize it and put it into the HVAC system as an aerosol. You may recall hydrogen peroxide as a young person where your parents uh, poured it on uh, an abrasion or, or some sort of cut where you might get an infection. So it's a disinfectant. The third technology I want to mention is ultraviolet C or UVC lamps. Uh, you may have heard of the term ultraviolet. It's, it's the short wavelengths uh, um, in terms of visible light or not visible light. And these UV tubes can be put into your furnace system and they will destroy COVID. The only issue with them, in my mind from experience, is that they do burn out or, or uh, break from time to time. Not break, but just burn out. And you have to check them from time to time to make sure they're still working. And last um, is these high efficiency filters. Now they are more for removal of the virus rather than destruction, but they f- if you get a what they call a MERV 13 or higher, and the higher the number on these MERV filters, the, the more s- small particles they'll remove. And MERV 13 is recognized as removing the COVID particles. It does come with a higher pressure drop because the filters are tighter, so you use a little more power on your uh, on your pressure drop on your fans and your furnaces and you'll have to make sure you from time to time change them out again four things to remember as i've said throughout these covid par- uh, presentations personal protective equipment is the least desirable way to protect people and masks are not ppe and it's the very small particles the aerosols that are of concern um, and these small particles are the ones that that cause uh, disease because they reach the deep lung. As I mentioned in this podcast, the key is to use engineering controls of dilution and destruction. Those will actually make a difference. Those are common sense solutions to the COVID-19 issue. Thank you. I appreciate you listening to us. Watch for our next podcast. Have a great day.